Yo, yo, yo. What up, everybody? It is your boy, Brandon. Now, I am just now starting to do these little vlog things, but as you guys know, I now have the A7S III, and I absolutely just love this. Right, right now, this is my first vlog. I'm so excited because as a Sony shooter, you know, I've never been able to do this. Now, yes, I can do this with like the A6400, the 61, the 66, but they got the little flip-up screen. Like, just having it out to the side like this, it's just crazy and it's just tracking me amazingly. So I wanted to do my first vlog um, and this is the first video that I'm actually shooting in 4K. I'm in 4K 60. Um, the codec I am using currently is the XAVCS um, 4K X60 um, 4.222 um, 4 um, color, color depth. So this is pretty, really cool. So a lot of people are asking about this, this camera is absolutely incredible, all right? I know you guys heard a lot about it and about how incredible it is, but literally, this camera is absolutely incredible. So you might ask me, you're gonna say, hey, Brandon, I keep hearing about that stuff, but why is it so great? What is so great about the A7S III? Now, I also wanna tell you that I'm trying a new color profile also. I'm using PP6 um, Center 2, but I also did some things with the um, black levels. Um, so hopefully it looks really like cool, natural, but also has some little like black tones in it, which is cool. I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna put a LUD on it or any color grade. I just wanna see what this looks like straight out of camera, okay? So let me tell you, the A7S III, it makes you want to video. It really does. It's having a flip out screen, especially for Sony shooters. Like we haven't had this in so long. So being able to just, I'm, I'm vlogging, yeah. This is just crazy. So being able to just flip out the screen to the side now, and being able to keep my lenses, I don't have to basically install myself in another ecosystem. I don't have to spend a ton of money to go to like Canon or somebody else in a whole ecosystem when now I have what I have in the A7S III. Absolutely incredible. I can use my lenses, and I'm all good now. Here's another thing. A lot of people talk about the 12 megapixel sensor of, <coughs> excuse me, of the A7S III. Um, and then when we get back, I'm gonna tell you guys some things that you really, really need to buy for the A7S III that people are really not telling you. I'm gonna give you the real and tell you what you actually should uh, be buying right now. So I'm gonna turn around because I think I got better light this way. So um, here's the thing. The 12 megapixel sensor, on the a7s3 it's amazing now this camera is a beast okay you guys got to remember that the files on the a7s3 are large it is a monster i know it's almost like buying a lens that's like a 1.2 or 1.4 you don't buy a lens that's a 1.2 or 1.4 to shoot it at f4 all right i'm not going to buy a 1.2 to shoot it at f8 unless i have to of course the same with the A7S III. Since Sony shooters now have 4.222, because we, every other codec, every other camera that we've always had, has always been 8-bit 4.20. This is the first time ever that we have had the color codec, the, the, the in-depth um, 4.222 color depth to get us more vibrant, beautiful colors. And that is really big for Sony shooters. Um, so that is really, really important. But these files are already big. I don't care if you shoot in all eye. I don't care if you shoot with the new um, H.265 codec, uh, codec in the XAVCHS. I don't care if you even shoot in 4K, uh, the XAVCS, which is what I'm shooting in right now. It is, the files are going to be big, all right? The four, and like I said, I'm not getting this camera to shoot in 4.208. I'm not getting this camera to shoot in 8 bit 420. All right. I'm getting it because I finally have the liberty to shoot in 422. So I'm going to shoot and get that range of color depth in 422. So, um, also, I'm using active stabilization right now. And here's another thing. The A7S III has active stabilization, which gives, you a, which gives you another level of stability when you are using it. Right now I'm using active. 
I'm not gonna buy this camera and put it in standard, all right? I'm gonna use the highest level of stability, all right, which is active. Now, yes, when you shoot in active, it does crop into the um, crop into the picture just a little bit, but I have one of the best vlogging cam um, lenses on the A7S III right now. I went ahead and bought the 20 millimeter 1.8G lens from Sony after I used it in one of my last photo shoots. If you don't remember it, you can find it up at the top or whatever. But um, I'm trying to find some good light around here. This is why I don't. This is why I'm not a natural light shooter. This is why I hate natural light. But anyway. Uh, yeah, ooh, I got, ooh, got light. Ooh, kill him, ooh, okay. There we go, so I guess I'm gonna go this way. I guess we can go this way. So, um, that's one of the biggest things. So anyway, this is one of the biggest reasons why Sony stuck with the 12 megapixel sensor. They knew that these files were gonna be larger. So think about if we had like a, like a 16 megapixel sensor, 18, 20, the files would be, can you think, can you imagine if we had a bigger sensor? The files would be humongous. Like I record, I recorded for about one minute. I, I went through all the codecs. All right, I went through the all I because I had a um, V90. You got to have a V90 card, or you got to have the CFast um, Express A card. So I had a V90 card. It was only a 64 gigabyte card um, that I used, um, but I put it in there. Man, even with, even with two minutes of footage oh my god bro you're talking about like 10 gigs <laughs> this is crazy i even i used the xav xavcs which is the normal um codec that we had on, on that we have in the a6000 the crop sensors the a7s i mean the a7s um it's really really good on here also um but i wanted to see what the files were even when i shot in 422 um 4k 60 4k 120 um, and the files were pretty much up there. The H.265, you get a smaller codec, but again, you gotta have the you gotta have the machine to run that H.265. Now, I have a beast setup in my Windows, but when I tell you that even with me and my supercomputer, I'm running two graphics cards. Okay, I'm running the um, the Intel 9900K, 32 gigs of memory. I'm running the whole be set up and when i tell you that my even my windows computer struggled to play the files uh, from the a7s3 man even my computer struggled so i'm going to tell you what my solution was and some of the things that you need to get for the a7s3 for it to work for you you need to get these things they are really important a lot of people are not telling you what to get i'm going to tell you what i got to make my a7s3 setup just total beast and i don't have to worry about it, all right ready let's go <laughs> Woo! so what's up everybody all right so now we are back inside all right and of course because this is my first vlog so i'm actually really loving this i can see myself i can get in the and i can just talk to you guys about some crazy random stuff so today's vlog is about the a7s3 so basically what i'm gonna do is i want to go through just a few things that i you guys really if you're thinking about picking up this camera or you've already ordered it there are a few things that you really really need to think about or get before be, to, to really unlock the potential in the beast of the a7s3 okay so i'm gonna get right into it the first thing you guys want to think about is the memory cards okay now if you're not going to shoot all i of course all i is the biggest it's not the biggest but it's the best codec on the a7s3 all right it gives you more detail it gives you everything however you're talking about files that run over 600 megabytes a second those things are going to be big and then on top of that you have to have a memory card that's either a v90 or the c8 fast um, express a card which is crazy so i'm probably never going to shoot in that to do that whole 4k at 120 thing i'm really probably never going to shoot in that i'm good with the v6 of uh, the v60 cards um, and you can use all the other codecs with the V60, okay? Except the, you know, the, the, the all I, um, and the other one. So, or, you know, the slow and quick or whatever. So, um, when you get in the memory card, I'm going to tell you right now, even when I put in a, a 128 V60, all right? I bought a 128 V60 from Lexar, um, saw some other recommendations. I'm going to tell you right now, the 
the files are going to be big. It's very easy to fill up a 128 gigabyte memory card. Even if it rolled over to the other one, it's gonna be big. Now, if you're like me, I record all my videos and things for YouTube, all right? Sometimes my videos be pretty long. That's a lot of data. Um, I could record it in the lowest codec, which is no XADCS, probably 4K, um, 4K 30 or 4K 60, but that's still about 200 megabytes a second, even if I wanted to use the 4.22 color depth. Um, it's still gonna be a big file. And a lot of people are trying to get away with it by recording less um, video, recording less in your video, and um, not bringing you guys as much detail about the videos and everything. Um, that's why I can do that when I'm recording 1080p, um, HD at 120. Um, but the files are going to be big. So I highly recommend if you get an A7S3, I would not, I got a 128, but I, I immediately after going through all the codecs and after using 420, 422 and everything, I, I, I immediately went and bought a 256 car. So I went ahead and bought, you can see it right here. I went ahead and bought another Lexar. This is the 256 gigabyte. Now I went and bought two of these. They're V60s, Lexar, uh, 256 um, V60s. So I went ahead and bought two of them to put in my A7S3 and that will, that's about 512 gigs. So that's way more than enough. But again, if you're thinking about shooting with the A7S3 all day, if you're doing weddings, if you're doing events, or like me, if you're recording photo shoots for you guys to give you guys information, to give you tips and tricks and show you behind the scenes and stuff, you need a large memory card. I'm telling you right now, if you're just gonna shoot for about five or 10 minutes, then yeah, a 128 gigabyte memory card is gonna be great. You're going to need a big card. I would not put a 128 gigabyte memory card in either one of those slots. I would definitely go with 256. So that's what I went and done. So along with the memory card, I went ahead and invested in another hard drive. This is a five terabyte, ter five terabyte Western Digital Black. This is made for gaming. So the read and write speed on here is really good, um, but this is a five terabyte and I wanted to get a new hard drive uh, with all the new videos and things that I'm gonna do. So pick up a new hard drive, definitely. If, you know, combining those files and everything, I kind of want all my stuff in one central location. So when I start off, I want to make sure I have a good hard drive. The next thing I went and picked up is the uh, ProGrade Digital US UHS-2 car reader. Now this is a dual UHS-2 car reader. You probably guys heard about this. Um, you guys probably seen it, but it can read UHS-2 cards really, really, really fast, all right? And these are UHS-2 cards. You gotta put, you gotta have UHS-2 cards um, with this. So I wanted to get something that would read my cards really fast, and this thing is great. It is a little bit more pricier than your normal uh, card reader. It's about 65, 70 bucks. But when I tell you it's worth it, I'm not gonna tell you guys anything that's wrong. When I tell you this is worth it, this is worth it. You can put two cards in here at the same time, um, and have the read on your thing, and it can read them really, really, really fast. So, along with everything else, I had to pick up that dual UHS-2 car reader. It's really important. You definitely are probably going to need it when you have the A7S3, all right? The other thing that I picked up was an HDMI cable. Now, I thought the a I thought the A7S3 was like my A7 III, my A7, my A6400. They use the micro USB. The A7S3, if you're using an external recording or external recorder or an external monitor, the A7S3 uses a normal HDMI, all right? HDMI out. Is this, this is what you plug into your camera. You don't get the small one, plug a smaller micro um, HDMI in there. It takes the normal size HDMI, and I'm really glad I found that because I did not actually know that. For faster reads and for faster um, transfer of speeds, you have, they put the normal HDMI cable in there. So I have an HDMI to HDMI, all right? HDMI to HDMI. So if you're, if, well, if I hook up my Atomos Ninja to this, um, put this into the Atomos Ninja, put the other side into the A7S3, but you need two um, HDMIs on each side, all right? Not a micro HDMI, that's really important. Um, the one of the other things that I picked up for the A7S3 is probably the biggest investment. Even with my windows, and I'm gonna take you guys over here to see my computer. Even with my computer, my setup, and how beast my windows computer is, I 
still was having trouble when I put my videos, when I did some tests with the codex on the A7S III, whether I shot an R all eye, whether I shot a new H.265 HS codec, or whether if, if, whether I even shot in 422 um, on XAVCS. My Windows computer, when I tell you my Windows computer, the one, even the one I built that is a beast for like gaming, it was having trouble reading for, it was having trouble when it was dealing with 422 and also H.265. Um, H it was struggling, it was very you know, staccato, staticky. So what did I do? I went out and bought one of the new Apple computers, all right? I didn't get the laptop. You guys have been hearing a lot about the new M1 chip in the new Apple products, right? So I went out and purchased the new Mac Mini, all right? This is the Mac Mini, this is the M1. This thing, now I only got the 265, it has a 256 SSD, but of course I use an external hard drive so I don't have to worry about, you know, building this thing up with space and stuff like that. But when I, this is a desktop, it's crazy and I'll show you it, I'll show you it on my computer. But I did not believe how small this was. This thing is an actual desktop computer. It has your, you know, your normal setup, your HDMI to hook into your monitor, your two USB ports and everything, and you just hook a monitor into it with a keyboard and mouse, and you got a desktop. But more so, this thing can read H.265. It had no problem with 4K 120, 4K 60, 4.22. I mean, it cuts through it like butter. It cuts through video like butter. And I was, I was, I was using Final Cut Pro because I sometimes use Camtasia. I use Premiere Pro, and I moved over to Final Cut Pro um, 10. And when I put that video, when I put that footage in Final Cut Pro, no matter how big that file size was, this thing read it with no, I mean, I was probably only using 15, 20% of the capacity of the M1 chip and it read it like crazy and it does it like butter. It reads, it reads the 4K with no issues at all. And I was, this right here, amazing investment. Everything that I'm showing you guys from the memory card to the, to the hard drive, to the Nano, this is a Nano the nano um, cord for HDMI to the uh, UHS-2 card reader. I'm gonna put this all down there. This setup right here will make your will make having your A7S III a dream. These are all the things, you, one, two, three, four, five. These five things right here, the five things that you need in order to make your A7S III a dream is all right here. The last thing, now this is optional of course, I'm not gonna tell you that you need this, but the other thing that I picked up is this. The lens that I'm recording you on right now, this is the new um, Sony 20 millimeter 1.8G. This is a perfect vlogging lens. Did you see the distance I was when I was vlogging outside? Um, I'm pretty close to you right now, but this is an amazing vlogging lens. Now I can vlog, guys. If I wanna back it up a little bit, I would just have to take it out of active stability, um, out, out of active stabilization and put it in standard stabilization. I still get some nice smooth footage, but why would I use standard when I have active, when I have another layer of stabilization now? I, I wanna use the best, I want the best. So I'm gonna use the best that the camera has to offer. But this is the setup that you need. So I'm gonna put everything in the comment section below, guys. Please use the links below. For, this is my first 4K video while I'm recording it, so hopefully I'll be able to put it in there and bring it to you guys. Hopefully I won't have any issues. So now, if it's on YouTube, you know I didn't have any issues, right? So I'm really excited, guys. So comment, like, and subscribe. I'm gonna be doing more vlogs because I have the A7S III now, and it just makes photography and videography so fun right now. Now I can just, I have another Sony camera, I can see myself and it just makes things fun again. You know, it just made things so much fun. Even if you're not a videographer and you wanna get something, maybe you, maybe you wanna get into it in the future. The A7S III is crazy. This is not normal 4K. I've compared this 4K footage to my A64 4K, to my A7 III. This is a different type of 4K. All 4K are not created equal. The 4K footage that comes out of the A7S III is absolutely incredible. And I will tell you one thing else. Even if you didn't want to do 4K, even if you wanted to continue to, continue to shoot in 1080p HD at 120 frames a second, the 1080p 
that comes out of the A7S 3 is absolutely stunning. It's stunning. And you, oh God, it's, it looks like 4K. It looks like, it's, I think it's down simple, actually 4, uh, 4K 24P, if I'm not mistaken. But even the HD that comes out of here is absolutely amazing. And I'm super excited. I just want to go out and vlog and just tell you guys and talk to you guys more. So I'm going to be doing a lot of vlogging. I'm going to try to bring you at least one vlog a week. Um, and we're just going to talk about some stuff. And I'm going to give you my opinions. I really appreciate you guys' feedback on the A7C video that I, there was a lot of discussion some good i mean most of you guys had some really positive feedback all opinions are welcome of course that's why we do it but most all most of all you guys really appreciated me just talking to you guys about my opinion and telling you guys the good the bad and basically the ugly and what you should do and i really don't care i know there's probably a lot of people who didn't appreciate it probably sony didn't like it but it's okay because I believe that you guys should understand all aspects because a lot of these reviewers will get on here and they won't tell you everything, all right? I can't tell you everything, but I can tell you from a professional photographer's standpoint of view how it affects you as a photographer, not as somebody who's just gonna sit at home and review some stuff and never use it. You're not outside on location. You're not dealing with models. You're not out there using a the flash. You don't shoot during the daytime. You don't shoot during the nighttime. You don't shoot on location. You don't shoot in studio. There's a lot of stuff. I'm telling you from a professional photographer standpoint of view, somebody who actually does it all. So I really appreciate you guys and I'm gonna be bringing you more. Let me know if you appreciate this. Let me know if there's something that you wanna see, something that you want me to talk about. But I really wanted to tell you guys about ha after having the A7S 3 for a few weeks, this thing is absolutely incredible. Having being able to do 4K 60, 4K 120, um, just the flip out screen, being able to use my lenses and just the feel of, I mean, it just makes it fun again. Um, so make sure you get these things, put in your pre-order. I don't care if you're not gonna get it for like another four or five months. Start saving up your money, put back a hundred, two hundred dollars a month. Get you the A7S III because this thing is revolutionary. I was never really a big fan of the A7 lineup, A7S lineup, but the A7S III has completely changed the game. You might say, I don't need all that. Trust me, you need all that. And I don't, I mean, I, I don't think I will ever have to buy another video camera again. Video was the only thing I was missing, and now I got it. And I'm super excited. I don't care. It was an investment. I have this now, and then I have my portrait camera in the A7R4. I'm set. So, I love it. Comment, like, and subscribe. And guess what? I'm going to bring you another vlog soon. Holla at your boy later.